slowly. In dive comps versus dive comp, we talked about how like main is like not super important in any situation, especially with dive. With dive, you're trying to like look to win flanks. So if you win flanks, like like let's actually let's do this. Oh, please stop. Let's say squishy backline, squishy backline, flank, flank. If Team Pink wins this flank, they can then send this blue guy back to his team. And now Team Pink can dive backline, but you cannot just dive backline straight on because you because it's easier to peel. It's a longer distance, and you get spammed while you do it. You have to learn to control, like find a way to control flanks. So in Briggs and Mirrors, it was a lot about tracer versus tracer, ball versus ball, ball tracer versus ball tracer, echo versus echo. In the Brig and Zen supporting the flanks so that their flanks would win and dive their backline, and that their flanks would win so that they don't get dove. Because if their flanks lost, their tracer lost a tracer duel because she didn't get harmony orb but didn't get dove scored, then they're gonna get dove because the tracer is now free. The enemy tracer is now free. So that that's a TLDR. Now the way. It, I'm interested to see how it works here is because this it's gonna be the same thing. Like the monkey, they're gonna look to monkey's gonna look to dive their backline and they're gonna look to trade and poke out their backline. Um well, not necessarily trade their backline because their backline's harder to kill, but they have so like they need to punish and pressure, you know, the monkey tracer so that they, their backline doesn't get dove. Now, if we compare hero versus hero, monkey versus or ball versus monkey, ball is way, way, way better at longer mid-ranges. Way better. Like, he has actual gun, and he can spam, and things like that. Monkey can't do anything at all in long ranges. But if you get your monkey onto the middle of the enemy core, like, get in there, he does way more than uh, ball. Like, he does, like, cleave, consistent damage. He doesn't have to reload constantly. His bubble's busted, all that kind of stuff. Um, so basically, like, this, for the, fighting for flanks and pathing around flanks, I expect monkey to be pursuing and looking for shorter sightlines. So short sight lines um, where he can get more value out of like the brawl. You know what I'm saying? And this is more like longer spam, more spam, more disruption. Shoot the monkey, keep him at distance, punish, 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 help your tracer, duel their tracer. Because again, monkey can't help his tracer very much. Like monkey is like, monkey doesn't do good against Sombra, against tracer, doesn't do anything. Ball can shoot a Sombra, ball can shoot a tracer. Like monkey can't do anything. So monkey wants to like flank, flank, clear out and brawl, almost like a Reinhardt, like we saw in the previous review and eventually get to the back line. Um, and then when we compare Zen versus Brig, it's the same thing. It's literally spam. In other words, you enable, like you are either spamming yourself or you're enabling your tracer and uh, ball to keep spam, 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 pressure, pressure, pressure. Because once you get on top of the Zen, he's dead meat. You know what I'm saying? But he, with Discord and, and, and Harmony and Spam, he can make getting to him very painful. Same thing with the Ana. Short silence. Sleep Dart across the map, not so much. She has a sniper gun, but she's vastly inferior to uh, Zen at ranged pressure. Not just through hitting shots, but through Discord and Spam and Harmony. Like, an Ana, in other words, Ana, tra Ana helping her tracer versus Zen helping his tracer, uh, Zen is way better helping his tracer spam and control space. Way better. Discord and Harmony on your tracer, or Discord and the enemy tracer, Harmony and your tracer, Ana can't heal that. Do you think a nade helps in a tracer versus tracer war? No. Ana needs to get into you so she can nade you. So this entire war is going to be about can these guys basically close distance without getting poked out by Zen, tracer, ball? And can they get to a point to where they can control flanks so that the Ana gets value and the monkey gets value? Because if this if fuel is able to keep them at distance on the flanks and they're able to poke them out and heavily pressure them on the flanks before a brawl happens they're done so basically the way of simplifying it is that this team wants to play angles in space and doesn't want to brawl they want to poke them out and soften them up this team wants to play angles in space but they do want to brawl so they can't just all clump up in a, in a in six and six and run because they're going to get spammed out from behind so they have to utilize the flanks and angles but they have to utilize flanks and angles in really small areas because otherwise the monkey and Ana just aren't very good. So I think the forcing Winston here makes sense um, because of King's Row. When we think of King's Row, it's a brawlier style map where short silence are better. Uh, a map like a really, really, really open map, like a Junker Town, for example, uh, where's monkey gonna hide? Like there's, there's very, very few places for monkey to hide. Um, okay, does that make sense? Brawl, brawl to me, it, like when I say brawl, I mean they wanna play short, get short silence and get up close. They wanna get up in the teeth. 
right? Brawl is literally what it means in the English language, not in terms of Overwatch terms, just brawl in terms of getting in their mouth and punch them in the mouth. When, I, when you think of Ryan and Brawl, it's because you think of Ryan liking punching people in the mouth, right? Winston also wants to punch people in the mouth, at least compared to Ball, right? Because that's all we're comparing here. If you were playing this versus like an actual Brawl combo like Ryan and, you know, uh, Reaper, then obviously Monkey wouldn't want to. But against this comp, that's, that's, it's absolutely. So you have to play the strengths of the comp. So what I expect Soul to do is do these aggressive rotations through short sightlines and try as best as they can to pincer and catch Briggs in. And this team has to stop them from doing that. They have to soften them up. Can we expect Gesture to play very flanky then? Yes, you, Gesture will never die from open. I would be shocked. And Gesture also will try and avoid running into Tracer and Ball as much as he can. He'll stay away from those guys. Meanwhile, these guys will literally just be pursuing um, Profits, Fits, and Gesture, looking to fight them, getting, get Harmony Discord advantage as much as possible. They, are, they must protect their Zen. They must put pressure on the enemy team, otherwise they will lose. Okay. I do expect this team to play a little more clump. They will play angles, but you can't have your monkey by himself. He will need to play with his on a brig because it's too easy to force out a monkey because uh, he doesn't have any range damage. In other words, if a tracer finds a monkey, the monkey has to run away. That's just how it is. Um, so he'll play near his supports. These guys will probably flank as a unit, and these guys will flank as a unit. Whereas these guys can play by himself, by himself, by himself. Uh, to an extent by herself, there's a threat of hack, but like more splitting up units. These guys will play as a unit and then, you know, individual units here and here. But I, I don't see these guys isolating because they're too easy. They're too immobile and they have no range. It's top right. Yeah, smart. Because this is what we expect. We expect them to go here, here, maybe drop or uh, and then go up the stairs and then Briggs then have to run away, right? Because that's the short side and they can't spam them in there, you know? And Briggs then eventually will rotate and hopefully get Dovin caught. At least if we're going for the Winston Sorry team. I don't really care who wins. I'm just going to analyze it. So yeah. so yeah, you, you see this? So you see how like the Sombra is split? And I imagine the Tracer is probably a little split as well. But these guys are kind of all in the clump. They're still playing for angles. But at least several members of the, of the friendly team have to kind of play close. Um, Zarya and Winston comps is very tricky. Um, It's not very safe. But yeah, it just depends on the matchup. Yeah, so Prophet split. The, the reason, but Prophet has to be careful because he's going to have to deal with Harmony Orb and Discord Orb, and his Ana might not be able to see him. Be very careful, be very careful. I don't like that move from Prophet at all. Yeah, that's, that's a complete feed. So we, we, can, we can already tell. So, chat, why is this a feed from Prophet? What, how does Prophet, should be Prophet be playing aggressively or safely? Look at the enemy composition. Look at the enemy composition. Should he be playing dance. exactly? He doesn't have harmony orb. He doesn't have discord orb. His composition is more clumped. In other words, he doesn't have even have a ball to help him. He's literally by himself with his sombra being somewhere. Because these guys play more aggressively, these guys have to play more carefully because they don't have harmony discord support. The Zen is really good at helping his flankers win fights, but he's really bad at helping himself. The Ana and Brig can help their tanks a lot. Well, the Ana anyway, but he, 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 this is bad. This is really... Oh, posh check, thank you. Um, Anti-Tracer, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Play Anti-Tracer, play really careful. Play really careful. Your job is literally just to survive and put out a little bit of pressure and wait until your Winston, Zarya, Brig get into position to aggressively go in, and then you can help. But this is bad. Prophet is feeding. Mm -hmm. Because now, now, what's stopping the enemy ball Sombra Tracer from chasing him down? You know? Monkey's trying to rotate, but he's split from his team, so he has to go back to his team. Fits as well as in a lot of danger. You see how... Dallas is very aggressively defending their space. They're not being sissies about this. They know that if they don't stop them from rotating for free, then they're going to lose because they're eventually going to get caught. There's the rotate, but is he by himself? He is. Oh, well, not quite. Yeah, so you see, yeah, they, they managed to get the rotate. Okay, so they get the rotate. It was a little sketch, pretty dangerous, but they get the rotate. Now, this is, this is scary. You're, you, this is scary for Dallas now because they've now completed the rotation and now do you see how close they are? Do you see how close to the enemy team they are? This is sketch. 
进来了，来赶二。Now what we love to see. Yeah, see now, but see, but you see, do you see, do you see fearless now? Fearless is like, okay, they're getting close. I'm gonna aggressively punish this. Okay, but now they gotta back off because fearless has to play slow. So we're gonna see a nano engage. I don't. Yeah. So I think what's happening is. Optimally, Prophet would be like pincering these guys. He'd be on high ground shooting them in the back as we go in with Nano Winston. But it might be that Doha and who is this support? Sparkle are doing a really good job preventing uh, Prophet from getting behind, right? They're preventing him from getting behind. So that might be what we see here. Nano, but it might not get a lot done. Oh, Nade, Nade chat, Nade, look, 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 look. Oh, he nades the Zen, creative. So they nade right through here, right as he pins or jumps. Massive, chat, this is why cooldown timing matters so much. If he had naded five seconds ago for a little bit of extra pressure, what this kill doesn't happen so the zen is nated which means he doesn't get armor pack or inspire healing and he dies to his solo nano monkey even though i don't know who this is i can't even see the name jexy okay this is so bad the the bit rate is so low jexy gets the boop but it doesn't matter that is a massive nade will he do an out power ranking as the scene goes closer no because i don't i'm not gonna be able to watch enough overwatch league games Also, here's the deal chat. So I know I know I talked about how I'm going to be doing um, some like expose the team. So basically I'll, I'll look over Overwatch League replays and basically scout out the enemy, the team that I scout. I'll scout out their weaknesses and expose how to beat them. But I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be doing that for two teams. I'm not doing that for Paris Eternal because I have two of my previous players on that team and I'm not... I want them to succeed. I want them to do well. So I'm not giving a scouting report on them. And I'm not doing it for Boston Uprising because they I worked for their academy team for a while. And that's just super scummy. Um, so I'll do it for the other teams. But I won't do a power ranking for similar reasons. Hey, that's just nuts. Oh, Phenomenal yeah. name. And that's where the synchronization... I just ripped my earbuds out. That's where the synchronization mattered there. Good Nano, it didn't have any pincer from Sombra Tracer. No, notice that Sombra Tracer were not in any position to pressure backline. So really good job by Sparkle. <laughs> Sparkle Noah did a great job making sure that this dive would not succeed. They did a great job because there's no Sombra and Tracer follow-up. They, they just checked them the entire time. No, no, you do not get the divers in. You do not get the stage behind us. We will not let you. However, because Creative landed such a big nade, they didn't need it. That is unbelievable play. This should not have worked. Phenomenal play by Creative. Bang, there's an 8. He's hiding his head hitbox. <laughs> so good job by um, Soul with rotating. <clears throat> they did a good job keeping the sight lines short. Good job by Doha and Sparkle defending um, the, the dive uh, in terms of like preventing the Sombra Tracer from sneaking behind and going up the high ground and getting him from behind. Um, good job um, by Jexy on peeling the dive, but just a better job by Creative when it came to landing that nade. That nade was legitimately just two kills right there. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Spy checking. So now this is when old start to come into play. So this is strange. I, I don't agree with this decision by gesture at all. I think this is too easy to punish by the extremely mobile comp of Dallas. I think. You could have a three-man peel or a four-man peel here with Discord, and he's gonna die or get his primal forced instantly. I don't understand what Fearless is doing here. Chat, what's a mistake here? What's a massive mistake here? Massive team-wide error from Dallas. So first off, we're splitting attention here. We're trying to deal with Jester in the backline, who, in my opinion, is feeding, and pushing in at the same time. But what's the problem with pushing in here? 
Yeah, you're, you should be punishing Jester, but what's even worse than that? Do you know, what do we not see in our screen? Where's the blue? Where's Sparkle? There's no pincer. This team can literally just press S and the mines don't do anything. There's no, oh, we're backing into a tracer in the back line. And you could tell also, look at Doha's positioning. Doha is also frontlining. So Doha and Fearless are playing like Reinhardt Reaper and walking in right directly at the enemy team. That's how Doha gets slept. It's, this, is, this is a good sleep, but he might not have even been, <laughs> yeah, he, wasn't even, he wasn't even aiming it for Fearless or for Doha. He was aiming it for Fearless, who was engaging directly at the front line, by the way, through a choke. This is a terrible engage by Dallas. They're split in attention, Doha's mispositioned, Sparkle isn't positioned, and they're going through a choke. And they're using an ultimate. So this is just atrocious from Dallas Fuel. Atrocious. Arguably zoning five people to kill one. Right, but if you're zoning, why is Doha here? Why isn't the ball just dropping mines and choke and peeling back to deal monkey? Like that's the only conceivable play I can say, and it doesn't I don't think that was a play. Sparkle was on high ground, even then Doha was not in position and they needed to peel off Jester and also going through a choke, like... So... Jester is just way too far in. Jester and Prophet are just way too far in. I don't know what they're doing. Like, Prophet dies again because of overextension. But this is just this is just really sloppy from both teams. And Jester ends up getting his primal, but like he gets a kill out of it. But again, like should that have happened? Should Repel have died to that? In my opinion, no. Like, look at Repel. The only re reason Repel dies. So there's the primal. He boops the Zen out in the open. And the only reason Repel dies is because he eats a right click from the enemy or eats shots or damage from the enemy composition. Like, I don't know if he gets right clicked by Zarya or if he gets shot by Ana, but this is where Repel's being positioned. He needs to be matrixed here. He's got Diva Matrix, um, Sombra Hack on the enemy monkey, Bash, Armor Pack, and he gets none of them and dies. There's the, there's the Inspire, but it's too late and he gets no Matrix. So this is just this is this shouldn't be happening. Like this this is just a fee. This is both teams overextending way outside of their space, and both because they're equally feeding, it's just a complete dice roll to see who wins. This is poor. This is really poor. And that is also well, actually we just saw her use bash. So never mind. Actually, you know what? No, I take this back. This is kind of feeding. Um, he did not see that the enemy brig used bash. So unless Jester calls out, I bashed. <laughs> you know, I bashed. Go. Maybe he did. Maybe maybe he did call out bash. But this is like really, really a high risk of getting canceled here. Macro mistakes from both teams. Yes. Jester staging way too aggressively, playing monkey into a comp where they could easily chase him down and kill him. And then instead of Dallas dealing with him, they also go and feed. Uh, so yeah. Wow. But you see, but you see here, like, the, the, the problem with all this chaos for Dallas is that with all this chaos that both teams playing poorly, the card is still moving, and more importantly, Dal uh, Soul is getting from here to here. They've snuck up. This card has been moving, and now the fight proximity, if you look at where the EMP is, you see how close they are now? They're on top of them. And we already talked about how the win condition for Dallas is not necessarily to spam them out, but to spam them out from like angles and flanks and to prevent them from getting too close to brawl distance without being punished. And that's exactly what Dallas has done or failed to do. We see this comp has literally just slowly, they've both fed, but they've eventually been able to close the distance without really taking any damage at all. Like Jester was able to use Primal essentially and just basically solo contest and allow his team to just essentially walk into them. And now this is when Nade is scary. This is when High Charge Zarya does way more than a D.Va. Wow. And there you go. So they just walk forward. I mean, it's Overwatch League. Like, we're not, I'm going to call it Overwatch League, but it's it's Overwatch League teams competing in a tournament. Holy flaming butt cheeks. Thank you so much, Neo. Uh, 
Chan Man, Maga Man, Chogo, Natter, Solosa, <laughs> Solo Solo. <laughs> thank you for the subs, guys. Or right, sing with the subs, Neo. Booty? Your mom was booty. I, I should have thought about that before I said it. Um, thank you so much, mate. How's your uh, apartment? <laughs> okay. So chat. Question. Where where should I'm gonna, let me get to get a good let me get a good frame here. Let me get a good frame. Where uh, Okay, right here. Where where should Soul set up? Where should Soul set up? Again, we're talking about like the type of fights that they want to exploit. They want short sight lines. They want short, fast fights. Short sightlines and fast fights, right? At least fast fights are okay. Not fast fights. I hate using tempo when it comes to compositional. They want short sightlines. That's it. They can take a slow fight if it's in short sightline because there's always going to murder everybody. This comp wants long sightlines. What time do you stream tomorrow? Uh, I don't remember. Check my schedule. Eleven? Not smoking anymore. Good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think you would play somewhere in here. Like abuse this high ground up here. Put your Zarya in high ground, and then you don't even need to play it fast anymore. You have high ground. You play your short sight lines, because this sight line here, this is it. That's the longest sight line you're going to get, because Zen can't stand a million miles away and do anything, right? He can't harmony and discord flanks from there, so he is he's stuck in a choke. So you keep him stuck in a choke by keeping your Zarya in high ground. I would put my Zarya up here. I would put my Sombra up here. I would put my tracer ball or my tracer monkey. You could put your monkey like on high ground up here or up here with you as well. Put your tracer on the flank here and put your on on this back high ground of the brig. And then just play this short side line. Chat, when people say that you should play a fight slow and fast, I think that's misleading. I think obviously heroes with higher damage eventually will whittle you down, but I think it's more important to ask which sight line should you be playing. Longer sight lines or shorter sight lines? Because they can play this fight nice and slow as long as it's a short sight line and the Zarya can spam because they have higher damage in short sentence. Like, if you think about it, when we think of spam heroes, we don't think of heroes necessarily with high damage. We think of heroes that have high damage at range, right? Heroes like Widowmaker and, and Hanzo. If I get a Reaper in front of in front of your face, a Reaper will out-damage a Widowmaker and a Hanzo. He'll out-damage a, a Farah for crying out loud. I mean, not, not maybe not quite that, but like... So it's more about playing the range and then not worrying about playing fast or slow. Just playing to the range that's better for you. So for right now, if they play this range here, Azari will out damage as an easily. So I, I want Team Red to quickly set up and take space around the locations where they have short sight lines. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Hey, Trey, thank you for the sub, mate. Is this Trey? This is Trey from uh, CM, uh, CMU, right? Or UCM. Or... University of Central Missouri. Yeah, right? Thanks for the sub, mate. I appreciate it. But yeah, I want I want him going high ground. Let's see what happens. I imagine they will. Hey, thanks for the sub, mate. Go, sorry, go, 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 go. And the reason I like the high ground is because it's easier to like shoot what you want to shoot and to be slightly safer. So, go, 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 go. Okay, so this is actually pretty, pretty, pretty interesting here. Um, they don't even, they don't, they don't take high ground. They don't take high ground. Like, so, I don't understand why. Like, you have the ultimates for it. Jexy's just going to press Q and go in. But I... I think... See, I look at this and I'm like... Hmm, I don't know. I don't agree with the way they set it up. Trance. Nice edge of the trance. Really good job. And also, I'm going so to compliment somebody, even though I didn't see them do anything. I'm complimenting Hanbin because I do not see purple in this in this in this uh, in this graph. If I don't see purple in this graph, it means Hanbin was doing his job because creative 100% goes for an eight here. 100%. Yeah, I've always said mate for legit years. Oh. Now monkey's on high ground, that's good. I'm just very unhappy that Zarya is not on high ground. Because here's the thing, chat, is like this fight, do you see how like we talked about how this fight's gonna go fast or slow? Well, I'm sorry, this fight is gonna go slow. We've got each team has at least one support ultimate, so this fight's probably gonna go slow. So it's gonna be the team that has a better positioning that ends up whittling them down. Because now all the support ults are about to end, and now it's just gonna be okay, who's got better angles? Who's got better spam positions? 
Well, stupid Toyu, who is this? To you is yes. sitting on main. He has no like look at look at the spam he can do. Nothing. Like, why is he not in high ground? I, I just I'm really and I honestly I didn't like Fitz is going earlier. So like Fitz being here I think this is for I think they were trying to maybe hack for an aggressive like grab. Maybe they're gonna hack trance or something. Um but like he's also not particularly like where does he translocate to? So he does translocate that high ground, so that's good. At least they have a somber on high ground, that's good. Because remember, it's, I'm not just randomly saying high ground is good. High ground is good because the somber can stand up there and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and do so much damage, plus hacks, without being pressured. The only thing that can pressure up there is the is the ball who might get hacked or D.Va who also might get hacked. Oh shoot, I need to update. Uh, uh, give me a sec. Chat, exclamation mark, VOD. Overwatch League Chinese Tournament. We're just going to call it Overwatch League Chinese Tournament because it's just what it is. I know when you were trying to go pro, you were learning, so you can also coach comms. Oh, did you ever get far with your Korean? No, I did not. Got, I got I got relatively far, but I bet that it was like such a huge time investment. And at that point, I was hard focusing on Uprising Academy, where Korean communication was not necessary at that point in time. I'd, I'm welcome to learning it if at any point in time it becomes relevant, but I'm not going to. It is there are other things to learn about were more important. Um, how's Bossman still streaming? I told you it was gonna be a long stream today. Uh, I should probably change the title as well. Mega educational stream with a hot Q and A, but not say with a hot man. Well, most of that is <laughs> accurate. Um, didn't fix the command. Wait, it didn't? Dude, what am I doing? Chat, I'm, I'm honestly, like, I don't have a functioning brain. And now, and now, and I almost, almost misspelled analysis. Holy cow. Uh, commands, edit. I need to do that part. Thank you, chat. I'm a little slow today. When's the next Ask Spilo? Uh, probably three or four days. We just did one yesterday. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm, I'm really not happy about to use position at all. And I'm impressed that Hanman ate the nade because the nade must have been eaten or something. <laughs> see, this is where like the fight has been sustained because of support ults. And now who's going to have better positioning? Because I'm, concern, I'm concerned now because I don't see anybody in high ground here. I don't see anybody in high ground here. And now Jester is having to go in with what I assume is Nano. But he has no DPS angle set up around him. So remember, Dive is only as strong, generally only as strong as the pincer that goes with it. In other words, if you have only everybody coming from one angle, they can just literally just press S like we saw with the mines earlier. And then you can't chase them down. It's when you have, you go in, T-Tours. I know, I know, I know. I'm regressing. But see, Zarya's on high ground. Sombra, I don't think he's on high ground either. And so this mon monkey's just going directly in with no follow-up from Sombra or Tracer being behind. So I'm a little concerned about... Uh, hmm. I mean, he is bubbled and he has nanoed. And Rappel is kind of mispositioned. Another thing to note as well is their D.Va bomb engaging, which means this D.Va cannot boop this monkey out. So this actually might be really bad for Rappel. Yeah. Oh, Rappel really needs to not end this here. Rappel, Rappel is woefully mispositioned. Like, this is so bad. Like, he should instantly at the end of Trance have kited all the way back to Mini behind him where there's a corner, and he can maintain long sightlines and then again still support flanks, right? Or gone back towards main. Probably would have preferred Mini because I think he has better LOS in the fight from there, but this is just feeding. Like, I mean, we've seen, I'm from at least on screen, we've seen nothing good from either team the last two fights in terms of, like, actual proper macro play. Terrible positioning, um, like, Soul completely didn't even bother to take proper positions outside of Fitz. Um, actually, that's not true. To you, I saw Monkey and Summer on decent positions, but they lost those. So Zari was woefully mispositioned, and then Rappel just feeds. Rappel just stands on. Rappel with his plat Zenyatta positioning. 
Yeah, this bitrate is terrible. It wasn't even any better on the actual Twitch VOD. I hope Overwatch League does something about this, because this is just atrocious. Like, I, it's, not, it's a third-party tournament, but if Overwatch League just can't be like this. This is just awful. Yes, good profit. See, this is this is what we want like to see. See how they're kiting from forward pressure and they're running right into profit. Now, profit's not exactly angled behind, but he's still on an angle, so it's easy shots, easy follow-ups. Bingo. Doha is gonna die. Don't even bother Doha. What are you doing, brother? Okay. So chat. So this is where things get a little bit hairy because they just capped. But this is where King's Row Third is awkward because everybody wants to control this space up here. But this, okay, you guys, can you guys see that over here? But it's so far away from cart that you might not be able to. So what I expect um, Soul to do is I expect them to try and get control of like in here and maybe get some angles in here as well. So Zarya might be playing in here. You might have like Sombra Tracer over here somewhere. Um, and then Monkey maybe on like high ground up here, like up top left here to drop in back line. And then for... Uh, Dallas, you want them to like, they really need to do a good job like pressuring out this angle here with their Discord and their Sombra Tracer and Ball. Clear these angles out and then slowly pincer around from there. Um, I've seen lately Natter has made some good macro and micro guys. Is he a good source to understand the concepts better? Yeah, he does a really good job of it. Okay, so they're going to try and control that right side maybe. But it's just, it's just awkward with the cart still being quite early quarter. Sparkle's positioned too aggressively. So like, it's really, really important that they, they get this angle cleared. Like, this angle needs to go. Um, because I know... Like, this is where the monkey's good, okay? So... Soul can abuse their monkey because Cleave and Zap and Bubble are really strong in here. Like, almost start, like really stronger than what ball, ball can do. So now that this map is like condensed a little bit on this section, this is where this comp is going to be pretty good. Um, but they need to clear this out. Like Discord, they, they, they can't, they can't, this needs to go. Because if they don't, then these guys are going to walk through here and jump on your Zen. Um, you might even send, like you could make a good argument that, that you would want, okay, let me go back a little bit. You could make a good argument that what, Sol, what Dallas should do is they should send their Briggs in up through here because it's safer over here. And they can again control and contribute without being within dive range. Because as we saw in the previous fight, Repel was like trying to contribute to the fight, but he's positioned so far forward that the monkey could just easily get on top of him. Like, do you remember the very first fight that Fuel lost? They lost to a nade. But do you remember how Jexy and Repel were like spamming, but then they like kited out the monkey engage and they almost survived. It was the Bionic nade that won it. That's kind of like the mindset they need to be in here. Like, keep keep, keep that monkey away. Spam, spam, spam. Keep silence, but keep him away. Fuel's going to lose again this year. They have no tracer. I mean, maybe Sparkle learns tracer, but not having a tracer player is pretty concerning. I mean, Sparkle could learn tracer. I was able to, like, with, with backbone, I was able to, with my coaching and backbone hard grinding what I coached, we were able to turn him into one of the best tracers in EU in like a month. His mechanics were already pretty good at the start, but he like hard grinded. Like I gave him a couple like basic things to work on and just grind, 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 and, and he's a really, really, really good tracer now. So it can be done. Uh it's just it's just harder, that's all. You see how like much effort they're putting in clearing this out? This is really important. Don't just dive, you know? Like you gotta clear out these singles, because if you just dive, then they're gonna peel it really easily. Because they're full resources and you guys take damage as you go in. So you have to clear out the angles because you get spammed out otherwise. Okay, I gotta, I gotta look at this. So they clear out left. They have EMP. Fitz is EMP too, though. Ooh. They don't have EMPs, but are they positioned to follow up? Hmm. So it's not EMP, yeah. And there's the pressure from this angle that we wanted to see, right? So they, they pincer them. It looked a little bit like... Yeah, so it looked a little bit like an awkwardly timed EMP because Brig Zen were backing off. Do you see this? You can't, This is just, again, terrible bit rate. But Brig Zen were backing off. When, when you'd EMP, you'd want Brig Zen to have a good sight line here. You see this here? Um... To where you could actually like discord and follow up on targets. So it looks like the follow up in this EMP wasn't there because the Sombra has to translocate out instantly. The ball doesn't really take space very well because he's already low and Briggs and aren't there to follow up either. So 
awkward EMP. Um, I mean, it hit three or four, so you have to be relatively happy with that. But yeah, unfortunately, they didn't get more follow up. Holy stream, thank you. But 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 all all things considered, like Seoul didn't really lose that much space. Like they already had some th some sort of like pressure on this flank here, so I'm a little concerned. So this could be fat. I can't like okay, so first off, Doha finds Fitz as translocator. So this might be bad for Fitz. But what is Rappel doing? Like this positioning is just atrocious. He's standing out in the open when he has legit like I don't understand. I do not understand this positioning at all. Like, what is he doing? He's so, like, oh gosh, this is so bad. Chat, corners cover. And especially when you're playing against a composition that can play extremely high tempo. Like, this monkey just jumps in and you die, as has already happened before, twice. What are you doing? Go, there's literally a perfect cover corner, long sight line behind you. And the EMP, he has to know that. Like, I don't, I don't understand this at all. Like, the only way Dallas wins this is if Rappel plays really safe and makes the, the EMP really hard to get. Because if he played in the back corner, it would be really hard to EMP because it'd be really hard to hit the Zen. And even if he did, it'd be really hard to get follow-up. This is just terrible positioning from Rappel twice in a row. This is just such a free kill. So they do get the translocator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So bad translocator placement by Fitz. Fitz puts it, like, right up here, which is, like, it gets scouted. Um, maybe not bad, but not not the best. It's um, So really heads up play by Fearless. But... I don't know, dude. This is just... And look at Prophet, Prophet, Prophet. Poggers, man. So Prophet, he immediately blinks through like L and is on the back line. This is really good for Soul. Even though Summer might die. Yeah, so he dies because he lost Translocator. But they still get the space. I can't even see what's going on, chat. I honestly can't see what's going on. <laughs> I, I can't see what's going on. Oh, no. So the Sombra, so so Prophet overextends a little bit and Fitz gets his translocator destroyed, but that, that's just unacceptable that they were able to get that free of an EMP there. I literally can't see what's happening. I can't see a thing. Uh, macro is just basically like how you play the game of Overwatch in terms of like your positioning and general concepts. Think of macro as like... Macro for cooking is making sure that you're measuring everything properly, that you cook everything at a right temperature, that you wash your hands, that you clean your bowls, that you that you carefully follow the instructions, that you um, are you know not burning the cake, and like all the big, big details, but it doesn't tell you what spice to use. You know what I'm saying? Or it doesn't tell you if, um, you know, you put a sprig of parsley on top, or, you know, it's just a very, very basic big picture stuff. Because it looks, it looks like a lot of this, these fights that, like at least with the previous fights, that positionally wise, both teams were making pretty big errors with how they're set up. But repel, like like the repel stuff is just I don't have no idea what repel is doing. Weird bubble. Weird bubble because now he can't press W. <laughs> And it wasn't blocking that much damage. He rally engage. So this is really going to be interesting, chat. Chat what? What do you see here? First question. First question. Chat. Does Seoul Dynasty have any flank control at all that you can see? In other words, do they have... Are they on off angles on flanking at all that you can see? No. Like, look at this. This entire team is all in a cone. Like a hot dog. All right? So they're going to rally and just W key at the enemy team. Now, let me very state this very clearly. This will not work if this team presses S. If they back off and bait them in, here's what happens. All right, it's um, it's literally like uh, I'm trying to think of like it's like what like what you do is this team says, oh, look at this team, we will kill them, hiya, and they rush in. This group core presses S and they split off. And these guys deepen. And now you are being shot in the back. So 
this from a fundamental macro standpoint is very, very bad. Now it might work because rally is just really strong and you can cheat with rally. You can just do stupid stuff with rally that you shouldn't be able to do. But the concern is, is that if these guys don't get a kill or a lot of pressure really fast, then sparkle and whoever else is on the flank is going to kill. Basically by pressing S key, they bait the enemy to troll themselves. Exactly. Now, they have a lot of ultimates, so they might just cheat. The way you look at ultimates is they're a way of just cheating your macro game. They can speed up uh, the macro game, or you can um, you can either cheat and ignore map control, or you can uh, speed it up, one or the other. So I see Sparkle sneaking back towards his team. I do not like that. I would like Sparkle to deepen. I know he's looking for pulse, but he can look for pulse from behind where it's a little safer. So they also mirror rally. Yeah, so they just, they so uh, soul just cheats. They just W key and grab. They ra rally, grab, pulse, and because they pulse grab, and then they can no longer trance it. Right? They can just pulse it and they'll get a kill out of it. Something else to note as well, chat. Look, look at Hanbin. Look at Hanbin. Hanbin's hacked. What does that mean? What does that mean? If Hanbin's hacked, what can Soul do for free now? Obviously. Graph pulse. Exactly. Nobody can matrix it. Nobody can matrix a graph. You can't matrix a pulse. So you have to get the hacker. Now I'm curious how Hanbin got hacked. Where, where was Fitz? Am I, am I reading this wrong? Was Fit did Soul have a little bit of map control? Was Fitz on a flank? Because if Fitz is playing with his team, chat, yeah. ah, here's the answer. Look at Fitz's HP. He's not getting rally armor, which means he was indeed on a flank. So while Dallas has a little bit more map control because they have both Sombra and Tracer on a flank, they do, Soul has some map control because they at least have their Sombra on a flank. And we know that because he doesn't have rally armor. So he's behind the enemy team. They're gonna rally in to bait the attention of, or let's, let's use this color. They're gonna rally in to bait the attention of the Dallas core while Fitz is behind. They bait attention. Hanbin's distracted by the rallying team. Then they look for a hack on Hanbin from behind and then they graph pulse afterwards. So we actually were wrong. Um, Soul did have some map control. They did have some flanks. They had they had fits on a flank, and that allowed him to get that flank. Easiest hack of his life because right, exactly. Hanman's not paying any attention to what's going on behind. So this is this is this is hard to read, guys. This is tough. This is with with this vod, man. Some, some serious detective work. And now, and now where things get scary as well too is if you look at this chat, because things are getting messy and very brawly, you see how like messy and like up close and personal this is? Remember, this is where this comp likes it a little better, right? The shorter sightlines complement that Ana a little bit more. The, the nades and the sleep darts, they complement the monkey bubble a little bit more. Um, so. Hopefully, uh, you know, Dallas is able to stabilize and maintain some long silence because this, this could be bad otherwise. So there was a mind on top of the, this team right here. This will slow them down. This might help out these guys to get long sightlines. Uh, I can't see anything. I can't see anything. Zen is dead. Yeah, so the very, very brawly up in your face fight, down one, it's over. If only we had pixels. I would be happy with pixel. I would be happy with one. Just a solid color. I could see what's going on. So this is going to be a tricky recontest because do you notice something, chat? How many members of Soul Dynasty are in cart? Very important. How many members of Soul Dynasty are in cart? Created being dead is annoying. Exactly. They only have one person on cart. Why would you have more than one person on cart? You're not going to cap it before they touch. So instead, focus on setting up and pressuring all the angles. Take the map away. High ground, spam, back here, and focus all of your attention on the cart from there. Screw cart. You don't need three people on cart. Get one person on cart and everybody else take high ground and flanks and focus on, on winning the fight. Win the fight.
And the hardest person in a car to fight? Yeah, for sure. But, but obviously, like I said, created being dead is, is rough. That was a huge pick that allows them to recontest with 65. Because they recontested 65. Very important to point out. They might actually take a fight here. No, they're not going to. They'll just farm EMP. Ooh, careful. Oh, 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 indeed. Okay. So, do you see this, chat? They will not let Dallas control this area here. For the, like, and let their Sombra and Tracer get value out of holding here. They're going to have... There's nothing in Fitz's area. And they're going to make sure there's nothing in here. And so when they go down the choke to cart, right, this area is controlled by them. This area is controlled by them. Here's the cart almost about to cap. Now everything of Dallas is just over here. They're all, they're all over here. Now they can still take flanks and angles over here, but there's nothing over here they have to worry about. Nothing here they have to worry about. It's all directly in front of them. Um, and then they can even use it. Like they can send their Zarya like, you know, here. They can send their Zarya around behind and start shooting them here, right? Their Samra can set up wherever she wants. So, and, and again, yeah. remember, what, what sightline is this, chat? Who, who's favored in this matchup with the compositions in this, in this range of a sightline? Who's favored? Uh, Soul or, 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 or blue? Red or blue? Who's favored in this, in this matchup? Soul, exactly. This is where Ana is way better than Zen. Nade, better sustain, immediately available, right? Uh, obviously, the monkey is just... a butchers people compared to the ball like what can ball do in here whip out his gun get hacked and killed you know M monkey cleave bubble all that stuff jump all that stuff is way better in there so soul literally can't win this they just can't it's too late so soul has to just play back of point open sightline and hope that losing this flank isn't going to cost him too much so really good of soul here to, to not just rush in an emp clear this out and then emp easy peasy and look at this, Fearless dies trying to contest this flank. Does he get hacked? No, no, Fear, Fearless messes up. So Fearless overextends in the flank and dies. Really good job by Soul. I would have actually preferred them to wait on the EMP. So I would have preferred Soul to push this more aggressively before the EMP, because the follow-up isn't there yet. Because you, you see how Soul is not really ready to push this yet? They're like still clearing out that flank and then Fitz EMP. So Fitz needs to slow down. He only hits two people as well. He needs to wait. I would have cleared out this angle, start to aggressively push, pressure cart, and then EMP anybody that gets close. Yeah, so that's just it. So does Ana Goats beat Zen Goats by playing extremely close range? I mean, it's a completely different game thing, but you do have the kind of the right idea. Like, if your Ana can can like get up and close, and they can't, because because like, remember in Goats, like you would take your Diva on a high ground or your Zarya on a high ground and whatever, but then the enemy Zen would discord them and spam them out, and then they'd harmony their Zarya and you just lose. You know, and, and if you had a, if you didn't have Discord or Harmony, you'd loot your Diva would lose flank, your Azari would lose an angle, you know, your Lucio would get discorded when he'd go for boot plays, etc. etc. So Ana Goats would beat Zen Goats if they could fight in like really close contested spaces and where your Ana would get value out of nade. And Zen Goats versus Zen Goats with the good teams would usually devolve to big, wide open, slow play style. And that's where Discord would matter. And at least in Goats mirrors. But as soon as the enemy team would play like DPS, you'd get off of Zen Go Moira. Goats is, Goats is just was a very famous brawl composition back in the day. So Ana Goats could be like a cheese type come some last favorite? Um, no, generally not because teams got way too good at like slowing down the tempo. They got way too good at slowing down the tempo. It's harder, to, easier to slow down the tempo of a Ryan comp than it is to slow down the tempo of a Winston comp. Because he's just a lot more mobile. Like in that composition, like like Ryan comp, you can slow, you can boop the enemy Ryan. You can play like more aggressive angles. Like it was, it got, it was really, really, really hard. Um, I think we saw Vancouver one time play Moira goats into Zen goats on a couple maps and just W key in, literally just hard speed. And because the Zen goats team didn't like split and take good angles, they lost. That definitely happened. I distinctly remember that. But generally, any decent team, they're not going to lose to that. Goats was just, the team's name was Goat. Goats. The greatest of all time. That's like a, hey, I'm the greatest of all time. You guys, you heard, he's the Goat. They were the Goats. They were the greatest of all time. It was a meme name by some tier 3 team that invented the comp. 
Excuse me, here called Goat. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Hi guys, my name is Goat. <laughs> okay, um... Chat, why are they going Echo? Why are they going Echo in defense? Why are they going Echo in defense? No one ever talks about the team in Vendetta Gear at long comp. You wanna hear something funny about goats? I was actually offered to coach goats right after the goats got popular, like a couple months after goats got popular. Um, and then other contenders teams in Overwatch League, like the original team asked me to be their coach, unironically. <laughs> I declined because I was coaching another team at the time. But I was I was like, hey, cool, I get to Yeah, strong impression to change. Well, here's the thing is you, you start your like here's the thing with the reason you wouldn't echo on attack is because you have to fight, 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 get space, and then go high ground. But if you're on defense, you're already set up on high ground. You could just sit. That's your, you, you start there, and so you could just... You know what I'm saying? You can start on high ground. And spam, 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 spam. Um, so I'm a little less hot on the attack echo because she has to fly and take space away, uh, which is hard. But if you're already... It's like it's like playing Torb or Widow in defense. You're already set up wherever you want to play. And so a hero like Echo is a little bit pickier about how she wants to play than like a Tracer. Ghost is the reason why we have two 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 in the first place. Yeah, pretty much. I do too. I don't. I don't understand people that don't like two two two. I. I don't understand. Like, I get that you miss out on some fun comps you can play, but it. It really reduces the cancer. Like, I don't know if I used to grind rank before two two two, and man, it was like, am I, are we gonna get a tank player in our team? Gee whiz, I wonder. Like, people don't understand how frustrating that was. Okay. Um, are we gonna see a mirror? Yeah. So, are we gonna see a mirror? Sorry, chat. Let's skip ahead. Okay. So basically. <laughs> the mirror is just going to be again who's going to control the angles more right right who's going to control all the stuff on here and here because whoever controls the angles more their summer is going to get more hacks and more ult charge their honor is going to get more value for nades or more opportunities to nade and their echo is going to get more spam because she's going to be able to play from high ground and chokes and, and spam chokes and things like that so like you want to play outside shooting in and i assume that like obviously red team has an advantage because they're already set up but what blue team have to do is they kind of have to rotate clumps of their core together to clear out those high ground flanks that the Echo and Sombra and, and Zarya are using, and then they can drop down and go core. So in other words, because Team Red already has all the space on the left, and they have all the space on the right, Team Blue has to go through with like five, four or five players and and clear these guys out. Get rid of, get out of here, go, go, go back to your team, you know, get out of here, and they they run away. And then they go, okay, we put our guys here now, and then we go back and we push. But now we have a flank while we push. Now, the danger is, is as you're clearing out these guys, maybe the guys on the other flank go and shoot you. So you have to be really careful. So, all right, let's see what happens. So he's just putting pressure on the flank here. He just does not care. This is good. He's building ult charge, but he's also slowing down this because they, they can't rotate. Because if they rotate without getting rid of Fitz, Fitz is just going to build a ton of EMP. So they have they need to get rid of him. They really need to get rid of him. But look at how long it's going to take with this hacked mega. <laughs> look at all these cooldown speak forcers. There's a sleep dart, I think I saw. Some shots. There's bubbles. I honestly don't think he needed to run there. I actually think he could have stayed a little longer. But, uh, but yeah. So Team Red is going to like look to tank angles probably around this spot here. So if Dallas just walks through the choke into this, this is so bad. I'm not getting into the tank DPS support debate right now. For another time. So B Dallas jumps up now. This is interesting. This is really interesting here. So Dallas must see something that I don't see. Because do you see how many? Do you see so much of Dallas is just like all here, all here. They have kind of they haven't even. So we've got red here. I think we had red here, and I think they had rev behind, and maybe red here as well. Maybe, is that a red there? So I'm interested by this because this doesn't feel like very smart Overwatch, but because we don't have the replay and because the bit rate is so low, it's really hard for me to see exactly what triggered Dallas to just ignore the flanks and just go in. So maybe they see a, a cooldown advantage, like, oh, we could just go, or we can cheat, or maybe somebody's really low, or maybe, you know, maybe Soul messed up, but I, I don't, I don't think this is very good from Dallas, so I, I, I maybe, maybe I'm wrong, like, maybe we, like, again, we can't see, so I'm not gonna holler and scream and rant and yell, because it's, I can't really see what's happening. Jordan, huh? 
But this, this shouldn't be good for that. But do, do you see this? Like, do you see this? Do you see this? The high ground spam, this spam, and then profit was still uncleared. And now they're all on point. So who cares if they got a tick? Did they even get a tick? Look, 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 look. look. Look at this, they're all around them, literally fully surrounded. Weird beam. Now, Soul has to be careful here because they got a kill, but then they didn't follow up on the kills. And what do you see on your screen that's concerning? What, what's concerning about this chat? What do you, what's the problem with this? Why is, wait, why is spot reviewing L? Why not? What's the problem with this right here? What's the issue? Echo has a weak angle. Well, yeah, but like more important than that. Clomped, yeah. I, I don't know who this is on the ground, but I think this is the back line of Soul. I think they dropped to go chase kills, but they didn't get the kills. So I hope this is just Monkey Sombra. I don't. I hope this is not Ana Brig, because if Ana Brig dropped, that's really bad. They lose a lot of angles in space. But yeah, that was sloppy of Dallas. That was that. I maybe this wasn't I didn't see, but they just like walked right into it and they got absolutely smashed from like three different angles didn't even try to clear it out you know what i'm saying uh what is the difference between contenders and overwatch league overwatch league is the top tier pros that you see the best ever ever contenders are the people that are trying to get for overwatch league overwatch league contenders are the is a tournament format where semi-pro players try and compete for overwatch league attention essentially that's where you can practice being a pro player um, and you know, Overwatch League teams might might trial you. Difference in skill. The difference in individual skill isn't massive. It's not massive. It's just like um, like uh, it would be the difference between like a top tier collegiate. Like it depends on the the region and the team. But top tier contenders teams are as are as good as probably bottom tier Overwatch League teams. In other words, it's very normal for top tier contenders teams from Europe or NA or Korea to beat Overwatch League teams in scrims. It's very normal. But the best Overwatch League teams are almost always better than top tier contenders teams. Team play, strats, and in mechanics to an extent as well. But not mecha the mechanical difference isn't that big, especially from top tier. Like most contenders and Overwatch League players are consistently 4.5 and 4.6k SR. They're generally about similar in SR. Overwatch League players definitely on average have a higher SR, but not, but by very little. All right. So, oh, yeah, see, this is, we're concerned about this because they're, they can, like, this is not as safe and this is not as good of an angle. Um, so, so gesture is going to go up. So it was really, really bad that Soul Dynasty dropped from good positions to chase kills, didn't get kills, and then were stuck in a bad position. Because the entire benefit of playing in defense is you can play wherever you want. So if, you, if you're not wherever you want to play, then the advantage of defense is gone. And, and this is the problem here. This is the problem. Look at gesture. So Fearless goes in. His team takes pressure in point. Yeah. And so now, now, do you see how like Dallas can kind of spread out here? Let me use a different color. Dallas can kind of like spread out here, take high ground and like here and pressure point at the same time. So if Soul wants to recontest, they have to walk through this and they get shot from multiple different angles. So this is really, really bad. This is why recontests in King's Row, if you're playing properly, don't work very well. If you guys stand as six on point, then yeah, it might work. But if you guys have like one person or two people capping, and you got people on high ground, you got people right through here, and people going through flank here, flank here it's not going to work. Questionable. Really questionable. Really yeah, so this is only they're, they're they're doing this just to buy time. This is a bad play. Fearless should not have gotten away with this. In fact, I think the only reason he got away with this is because they must have chunked Sleep Dart. Somewhere Sleep Dart was. Yeah, so Sleep Dart should have shut that down. 
But I mean, I mean, I guess good play by Freelance, but there's no follow up from his team. He's literally 1v5ing. It's just because he got Nano, Bubble, and Primal that it, it worked out. And I, I'm somehow they must have chunked their sleep. I'm not a fan of this play. I mean, I think it makes sense if you're trying to buy time, but it's a little risky. Kyro's high reward play, and it got rewarded. For sure. So Dallas just capitalized off of Soul's error. Like Soul just gave up positioning and got no kills out of it. Like if you're going to give up positioning, you need to kill them. You need to kill them and reset and go back to high ground. So what I want Dallas to do... Yeah, so this is what Dallas needs to do. They need they, they can put somebody in cart, but because Soul died so late, they can take every position that they want. They can go here, they can go here, they can put people up here, and they can just take the fight like here-ish. So Dallas can go ahead and start taking space here. And Soul needs to... Like, what Soul could do is Soul could actually, like... Soul, before the fight starts, Soul should not just go down through main. Soul should actually go here and check the clear this angle here and maybe clear this angle up here too. Uh, or one or the other at least. And clear them out and make sure there's nobody there. No Sombra, no Tracer, no Monkey, no Zarya, no nothing. No, I mean, Ana, even a flanking Ana. Like maybe hiding for a nade or something like that. Get rid of them before you go to stop cart. That way you're not walking into a, you know, a concave. Uh, I have no idea what you guys are talking about in chat. <laughs> I'm honest, I'm not even reading. So let's see what happens. So they they are clearing high ground. It looks like two use on high ground. They're spy checking. That's good. It's good. Not just a spy checking, but like clearing high ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No sarmas, no monkeys, no nothing. Okay, now they clear left. Now they clear left. Nothing, 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 nothing. And now do you see Dallas? Like Dallas is like slowly their space is shrunk. They've like they've like control less space now. Uh oh, sorry, is behind that wall. But do you see this chat? Do you see how like not Soul did a really good job of like they've got people here and they've got people here. They got people here. Now they know that they're all just basically here. So like this is pretty good. Bad bye bye. Well done, Soul. Very nice retake. Very nice retake. They checked they check their corners. They did their homework. They didn't just run down and stop cart. And they ended up grabbing the flank. They didn't even grab core. They grabbed the flank and it worked out really well. Who should be cart bot? Um, in this comp, I think Anna, because Anna's pretty safe in this comp. Anna, Anna can be pretty greedy. Her positioning isn't super important. Usually, like, you think Anna's positioning is pretty important, but in this comp, I think with, like, Brig and Zarya and stuff, like, she's pretty safe. You would prefer your monkey and Sombra to be positioned well and your Echo. Like, you need to look at your comp and be like, who's the hardest or most important to position well? And I think monkey and Sombra are the first ones here. Um, and Zarya as well. And Brig to an extent as well, because in a way, Brig is even squishier than Anna, because she can't heal herself. But it, it depends on the comp. Like, sometimes you can have Sombra push cart because she's really easy to position. But I think in this situation, because of how fast this comp is, you want your Sombra set up ahead of time. All right, so let's see what happens. So this is really well done. Really well done by Soldier. Dallas just completely lost the flank, like, hard. All right, let's see what happens. Look, look again, like, do we see how, like, how they're set up here? We've got people in the choke here, people here, people here, and there's somebody up here as well. This is exactly like a nice little concave here. But good job by Fearless jumping up here. Okay, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, wait, what? Oh, thanks. Hot like me. Wait, how did he not scout that? What? <gasps> wait, was her translocator right there? What? That was super, super risky. What? Wait, what, what, what's happening? Man, it doesn't really feel like Dallas is set up for this properly at all. Like, this is rough. Chat, you see the problem with this here? So there's spy checking Sombra. Let me actually look at like their backline as well. Let me see it right here. Oh, maybe, maybe they are set up. Because it looks like Zarya is going to be high ground and Briggs high ground. So maybe they are set up for this EMP. Sparkle's definitely not set up. But Dallas goes up, they go high ground, and they're going to be able to contribute to this EMP here. Monkey goes in, and Sombra's obviously in as well. Um... Yeah, this is okay. This might work. I'm a little disappointed that Sparkle's not there, but that might work. Yeah, that'll work. They counter EMP, but there's no support hold active. So it's like counter EMP only works if you can actually sustain the initial EMP. Otherwise, you've already like you're by, by the time this EMP goes off. Look at Team Red. Dang, there's the EMP. Wait, there's the EMP. 
but it's too late. Like, they're already, like, half dead. So, well done by Dallas. Dallas didn't set up great angles, but they did They did a good job clearing high ground. They got them themselves on high ground, so, and then they got enough at advantage early on. They just didn't counter EMP, at all. <sighs> they need to go high ground now. So let's let's see. Is Dallas gonna be the same brain dead morons that Solar on the end of the second point and keep people sitting on cart instead of taking high ground? Let's see. To be fair, not all of Soul did that, but too much of them. Sorry, go high ground. Sorry, go high ground. Sorry, go high ground. Sorry, go high ground. Or some or go somewhere. Like nope. Like, I just don't like this. I just I just really don't. Because again, you know that they have support ults. They're gonna have Nano, Rally, Primal, Copy. This fight is shouldn't, it will be, it's unlikely that this fight is over in like 10 seconds, bingo. Right, you just grab, you instantly win. It's unlikely. So like, I look at this and I'm like, well, you need to take better positions here. Because I don't love where your Zarya set up. Good, check your flanks before you push. Oh, this is not good. So again, Dallas is going hyper aggressive to try and hopefully cheese a cap. So this is a Dallas strat. Dallas says, hey, or not necessarily a, a written strat, like this is just probably something between the players. Rappel goes, hey, let's just go in with Nano Monkey really early. And you go in there, Nano Monkey, sorry bubble, etc. cetera. We'll, and then you pop primal afterwards and you're just, we're just gonna push cart. You're gonna cause as much chaos as possible and yeah, we won't get, lot, we won't get any kills with it probably, but hey, you just, we'll just cap. So this is what I this is what I expect is the calm the call and like this might work. This is exactly what they did in the end of first, which like fundamentally it's a bad play in terms of like winning team fights, but it's a good play to cap point because <laughs> you're not gonna get any follow up from your honor and brig or your sombra because it's too far away or your echo, but you might stall them out enough to cap. Sombra was also looked like to be set up for that. They double support all. It looks like did they nano yeah they nano their monkey in. <laughs> and see, this is just double, double primal, double primal. Sparkle uses his copy and goes in deep into uh, Soul Dynasty space as well. And they're just buying time. And they cap, and they cap. So they get, they, the, uh, they actually, so who dies on uh, Soul? Somebody dies. Or no, uh, Dallas. They lose Repel. Repel dies again. Repel gets hacked and dies again. Oh, Repel! I, I, I have a feeling Repel's positioning was not stellar. Let's put it that way. Where is Repel? I would love to see where Repel is so I can make fun of him. Yeah, so Repel is just standing right here. <laughs> Like not near, not exactly out in the open, but he's not near a corner. He's not utilizing cover. He's probably too close because again, you shouldn't be within just easy monkey jump distance as a flex support this, in this composition. Like it should be the monkey has to jump and then walk forward out of his bubble to get to you. So repel, I, I, I'm just going to call it. He just missed positions. He just missed positions. He just doesn't position optimally. He doesn't need to be this aggressive um, and he gets hacked and you know, he dies. But the double... The nano monkey plus copy monkey plus double primal, I think it's double primal, is enough to, for them to cap. So I guess whatever. So they're just stalling. They're not going to get any kills here, but they're just stalling until they cap. So Repel's positioning, man, it does not look to be stellar. At least he's getting punished for it way more than uh, uh, creative is. Okay, Fearless overextends a little bit. Fearless needs to just chill. Like, they haven't won the fight. They've just capped point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they haven't won. They just capped point. It's still a 5v5 from what I see. Okay. So, now this is where things get really juicy. Because, chat, what position of the map becomes really important when you have a monkey mirror and an echo mirror? On this map, we can see it right now. Think about those two heroes. What do what those two heroes like to use? Or threaten. What's the common denominator between those two heroes? Especially comparing to what we saw last time. Um, on the uh, the other attack. Because the other attack, it was first a ball. But more importantly, it was Sombra Tracer, not Sombra Echo. Right, exactly. High ground. 
Echo likes high ground, right? Sombra Tracer can't, well, Sombra can to an extent, but they don't have the ability to go to high ground, so they don't always have the ability to use high ground. They can throw the translocator up there, but that's really risky, right? But Echo very easily, and Winston very easily can go and control high ground. So what I expect here is the Echo that goes and controls high ground is the Echo that's gonna be able to get more spam out. The Echo that gets more spam out is gonna help their team win the team fight, right? Same thing with a monkey. If you can go to high ground and win the high ground for your monkey, he can engage a little well and take less damage, right? Um, and honestly, the monkey might just jump up there to help his echo win it. But if we can get an echo, a pocketed echo with armor packs on high ground, then that team will has a much higher chance of winning the team fight. So we talked about how like some of the lower flanks and like these angles were really important in the previous attack. Uh, but now with the echo on board, I think this becomes more important. So chat, when I when I say map control and high and things like that and flank control, don't just take map control because Spilo said so. Look at your comp and be like, where would I like to be? If I'm playing Widow, I want a long sightline. So I'm gonna fight for, I need my team to fight for space where I have a long sightline. I'm playing McCree. I would like a short sightline. So I need for my team to fight for in here. So like if I'm playing McCree, this is map control. If I'm playing Tracer and Sombra, maybe this is map control. If I'm playing Echo, maybe this is map control. If I'm playing Doomfist or Hanzo, this is also map control because those heroes benefit from high ground. If I'm playing, I don't know, but you see how like the, the map control just depends on the comp that you're playing because it depends on what, and sometimes you might go, okay, the enemy team is running a Doomfist, so I'm gonna control this area. Even though I'm running a McCree Tracer that don't care about high ground, I wanna make sure their Doomfist can't use it. So don't just, Oh, map control, map control, map control, map control. Think about it. Really think about like what parts of the map do I want? What parts of the do I not want the enemy team to have? That's really important. But yeah, exactly. This high ground I think is very important because both teams want it for their echo. So they they will literally fight over. It's like war. Like a very fundamental way of like describing war, especially back in the day, was like people would fight over areas with water, or they'd fight for areas with food or resources. Right? Like you wouldn't just go to the enemy team's castle and let me in, you would fight for the resources. If you win the resources, you win the war. Whoever wins this high ground has a really high chance of winning the war. So you'll see people dying, like it's, it's awful, but like like fighting and dying and fighting wars over just a little plot, little plot of land or a little bit of water, you know? Because whoever has that has a huge advantage. So teams fight over that advantage. And that's 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 how map control works in real life and that's how map control works here. Oh, if I die over a little bit of No, oh, hush. My wife is awful. Hey Spilo, I have a question. I'm a Masters player. Was Widow Tracer 76 a good hero pool? Or would I play Widow the most? I, or if I want to play one of the most, should I play McCree and Ash? I think Widow Tracer is a great hero pool, but I would definitely throw in a Kree or an Ash instead of a Soldier 76. I think Soldier 76 is niche. It, I don't, Soldier 76 doesn't really have a strong... So you want to play heroes that have very strong signatures. Widow, very long range. Uh, Tracer, very short range, flanker style. And then McCree and Ash are shorter range, right? Soldier's not really that. Soldier's weird flanky can run in your backline and meme thing. Like he's not a terrible hero, but like I I, I think McCree Ash fill in your gaps better, right? Like let's say they're playing like Torb and a map where Widow's not good. Well then what do you do? Do you have to play Soldier seventy six? I would prefer McCree or Ash. You know that's gonna poop on the Torb a lot better than Soldier. So I'd probably go with the Cree or Ash. Either one would be fine. Cree Widow Tracer Cree uh, Ash Widow Tracer is a great hero pool. He's a good generalist, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to, heroes that are generalists aren't very good oftentimes. You don't want a jack of all trades hero pool. You want a, a hero pool that has very strong strengths and weaknesses so you can pick whatever hero is going to complement the strengths. Because Soldier's not bad at anything, but he's not good at anything. So that means when you could pick and choose what hero you want to play, why would you, like, let's say you had to pick only one hero and quit and swap, then maybe you'd want to play Soldier because he's never really bad. But you can literally go to your spawn room and pick the best hero in the circumstance. So why would you pick Soldier? So always pick a hero pool that has good strengths and weaknesses because you can basically pick whatever one is the strongest. All right, so I assume teams are going to fight for high ground control for, to some extent, but we'll see. I might be wrong. Uh-oh. Doha feats. I also, but early in this fight, I expect teams to fight to control this left angle as well, because this angle is really, really strong for like your your Sombra to hold. It's a little too aggressive for your Zarya, but your Sombra can hold in here and build a lot of ult charge, a lot of pressure. So I expect as Dallas attacks, before they even start thinking about high ground, they're going to try and clear out this angle here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Glad to help. Yeah, so Fitz already has EMP, so where is he going to position? Maybe they take an aggressive fight, or he missed the mini. That's unfortunate. They might just go in like hard EMP. 
But it's going to be hard, a little bit tricky to follow up because obviously Fitz is on an angle, but like they're going to have to like go through a little bit through a choke. So um, this EMP will probably work, but Jester's going to have to have a very clean engage. EMP, brilliant EMP, brilliant EMP. Being on a good angle allowed him to hit more people safely. Really, really well done, Fitz. That should be an easy fight one. That's a five minute EMP. Brilliant, brilliant. Nice job. This gesture? Somehow they don't get enough follow up here. Oh, ge gesture messes up. Gesture, I think, jumps in right there, but the EMP is behind. So I think gesture messes up a little bit. Like, there's that engages awkward. Gesture should be basically on top of Fitz right now, helping out. But instead, he got in the front line. So this is kind of a scuffed EMP. The EMP itself is great, but the follow-up is, is weird. Something happened in communication there. How would you say this angle control works with Junkrat? Um, it works with Junkrat in the fact that he can very, very heavily deny main control. His trap provides some angle control by giving you information that A, somebody's there, they're trapped, or B, somebody's there, they shot, you're trapped, and broke it. So somebody's on that flank. And the other thing you have to think about Junkrat as well is you would always prioritize a flank that's being pressured um, over main if that flank is a small sight line. In other words, you know how on Dorado on first, um, on Dorado first, like like you know how there's like the the payload goes through that like little underground thing or the, the little bridge, right? The bridge across, you know, and then there's the stairs on this side here. You know, you can go to behind here. You're on attack, right? If I'm on defense playing Junkrat and there's a bunch of people up here, like there's people coming up here, I would start spamming here. And I wouldn't spam down main. I would spam prioritize and clearing these guys out and then go back towards main because this is a really short sight line. So you can still, like Junkrat isn't a spam down main hero. Junkrat is a spam down any sight line near a hero as long as it's, sh it's clumped. So he doesn't care if he's spamming main or he's spamming on a flank. He'll just spam wherever there's enemies and if it's a flank or main, he doesn't care. But he's definitely a hero that is weird. And that's honestly why Junkrat isn't a great hero. It's because he is designated to spamming in a very small area and has no range, no mobility. So he's not very good. That's why you'll see a lot of higher ranks Junkrats. They don't necessarily play him as a spamming hero. They do go for like flank, two taps to the back line and get out. Because that's the only, like a lot of the time, that's the only way you can get value out of him. You'll notice a lot of the early Overwatch heroes lack mobility and range and they're bad. Torb, Symmetra, Junkrat all lack mobility and they all lack range. And so they're very limited with what they can do. I mean, they have some mobility, some range, but usually pretty limited. And that's why they're limited with how they can play. So that's a great question. And maybe if we ever get a Junkrat VOD, we'll, we'll spend more time going into it. Okay, so Dallas does manage to clear out this single here. Now, you'll also notice how, like, the threat of enemy ultimates clears out map control. So, in other words, Soul really could, was playing aggressively around this space right here. Like, their kill box was here, so they had angles here because they had EMP. But now they don't have EMP, and they know that the enemy team has EMP, so they're going to shift this kill box to back here. So now they're set up around here, and so they set up their angles here and here and here. So Sol Dallas actually gets space just by having EMP, because Sol backs off and takes angles further back where it's safer, where there's more time, maybe their backline can play in a better, safer position. Um, so Dallas doesn't even need to worry about this anymore. Like they can clear it if they, they, they ought to clear it, but it's gonna, there's not going to be anybody here, very unlikely, because Soul wants to buy more time. Don't notice that Soul, when they back off, they don't clump. They back off and they split again. They take angles, but they take angles further back. They try and burn more time. So you'll see very, very minor resistance, I assume. Ooh, Zarya's pretty far in. So, so maybe, maybe not. Maybe they are just going to go. Yeah, they just go. But it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. Yeah, so to you is... Animo gets murdered. So this is questionable. Because here's my thought process, chat. If they were not going to shift their kill box to back here, then Fitz needs to not, then they need to do a better job supporting this. Because look at this. Look at how, how far back Prophet is. Well, okay, so Fitz, first off, Fitz gets cleared out really easily. That's really bad. 
But in addition, I don't know where Anna, like, they just do a bad job of following up on it. They just do a bad job of following up on it. That's actually really, really interesting that they decide to play aggressively into EMP. Um, but the problem with EMP is, like, if you don't really, like, cut, like, up your tempo into it and, like, get pressure before the EMP, then you're going to lose. Because they grab here, but they only grab monkey. They only grab monkey, it looks like. Did they grab, sorry? Well, they, yeah, basically they only grab monkey as far as I can see. And by the time the grab actually went off, like, the EMP was massive, so. Dallas did it, like, Seoul didn't do a very good job of aggressively, like, holding that space so that they could get a good grab. They played it, like, kind of weirdly, and Zarya ended up getting completely isolated and then Brig dies. As this is a weird fight. It, honestly, it's very hard for me to see, so I'm not going to comment more on this. Yeah, the problem with the fence heroes is they're very limited with like their mobility and range, which meant that they only work when you can set up and basically overcome the weaknesses of lack of mobility and range. Like Widow is a great example of a hero that was originally defensive, but because she has range, she's flexible. Um, Sombra, you can also describe as being a little bit more friendly and defensive, but because she has mobility, she's flexible. But heroes like Torb and Sim and Junkrat, they just, they only deny it, control, they only work at denying a very limited space. And as soon as that space is shifted, they just fall to pieces. Now, the reworks have made them more flexible, at least with Sim and Torb, but. Okay, so, not great old execution from Soul. And now Dallas can just press W. They need to clear out the Ana. So they could, oh, wow, what? What? Yo, chat. Can we just admire the fact that Dallas is so sloppy? Dallas is so sloppy. They get a free kill. They have all the space in the world. And look at where they decide to go. Look at this. Look at this, chat. They literally have an Ana and a Nano Monkey in their back line. And they're too busy running it down main than they are to actually get these kills here. Look at this. And Bastion, of course, yeah. May is a little bit more flexible because May has some range. But true. But this is just atrocious, man. Like, don't run it down main, guys. Take this into your ranked games. If you get a pick, don't run it down main. Instead, clear out check clear out your left and right. Because now they have this brig can't support the single. She's done. She's dead. Just go clear these guys. You'll get the kills, and then you can go push down main. They, you, all you do by running it down main is you give them the opportunity to shoot you in the back and clutch. And they maybe can clutch a 5 or 6. You're saying, you guys have man advantage. Or, or we have an advantage, you guys have map control advantage. This is just really bad from Dallas. Really, really bad. And not to mention that um, Sol is also willing to commit to ultimates to try and turn this fight. Well, they have an active echo copy and they have nano as well. This is just sloppy. Why are we not, why are we not clearing this out? Brilliant. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. And it's not clean at all, but Sol clutches it by just holding the, the positions like literally chat this inside room in the fact that wait where actually where was echo copy i was echo copy in high ground yeah oh chat chat it's so juicy i love it i love it i love when i get to coach when it's just perfectly represented okay our concept is is map control remember the high ground we talked about in the flanks dallas gets a pick because soul scuffs it up but look there's an Ana and a Winston on a flank right here. And there's a Zarya on high ground, a copy Zarya. And what do D Dallas do? They just run it down main and they ignore this and they ignore this. And guess who they die to? If they had just simply stayed careful, killed these guys, shoot the Zarya, force her to drop and lose her, uh, her copy, then they would not have lost this fight. Impossible to lose this fight. Oh, this is just great. I love when people get punished for doing stupid things. It's a great teaching tool. So yeah, the Echo and High Ground and the On on the flank that never got cleared wins the fight. GG's. Brilliant. Really, really sloppy macro from Dallas there. Really sloppy macro. Dallas is definitely showing themselves to have the worst macro of the two teams, for sure. The worst macro and Repel so far has had the worst position. Okay, they're clearing out this, this is good. Check it out, spy check. Okay, clear high ground. There's the high ground control. They commit bubble and jump to it. There's the teams fighting for it. Now, who, which basically whatever team wins this is probably going to win the fight. Like if we ignore ultimates, obviously. But let's see what happens. There's a big bubble. Good spam. 
I want to see. Okay, this is just great, guys. Good job by Dallas. Dallas did a really good job here. So they commit bubble. They're honest pocketing. So they have a good LOS, so they're honest. So the difference is the advantage that these guys have an attack is it's easier for Ana to pocket this way than it is for the enemy red Ana to pocket. Because you can get like a good nade here. It's like lots of little things, right? Easier sightline. Because there's like a box here, I think that's in the way. So Dallas, they have Echo, Ana, Zarya, Winston. Everybody's shooting, spamming this, right? And they win the high ground. Nice job. So what does this mean for Hanbin? What does this mean for Hanbin? They clear out the Sombra. Now, what does this mean for Hanbin? When Hanbin grabs chat, will there be follow-up from his monkey and Echo now? When he grabs backline, will it be easy for Sombra or Echo and Winston to follow up now? And the answer is yes, because they no longer have to jump from far away or from main. They just have to jump from high ground or spam from high ground, and they're already there. Exactly. They're already in a position to instantly follow up in main. So the, the funny thing is, is you can look at this fight... Just like when you see like a self-destructive person who's toxic and ugly and you're like, this person is doomed for failure like another six months. Like they're going to break up or something like this or they're going to have something bad. Like you can see the writing on the wall. The writing on the wall right now is that this grab is going to have great follow-up. Like you could say that Soul is at a very high risk of losing this fight already. Just because of the things that are set up around it, right? They won the high ground. Now Hanbin can W key down main and get an aggressive grab and there will be follow-up. Dallas is sitting main again. I mean, I mean, oh, well, well, you mean Soul? Soul is, I think, I think, yeah, Soul is sitting main. Like, Soul lost the high ground, so they have to back up to main. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. But yeah, they they, they have no angles. Like, so, like, the thing is, is like, who, like, they, they just can't. Like, Soul can't kill anybody now. It's it's over. So, my, my problem here, I think, is I would have liked to have seen. So, I'm not sure where Ana is positioned, but I think Ana positioned here would have been better. Maybe they were like, because like, I think Ana would have a better time supporting this high ground. Because the problem is that Dallas does a better, gets more value out of their cooldowns on the high ground than than Soul does. Um, like I don't, it doesn't look like if you look at like Fearless's HP or Jester's HP and Fearless, like Jester gets nuked, Fearless does not. So I don't know if Bubble is late. I don't know if Ana doesn't have a good sightline or what. But essentially, Dallas does a better job using their cooldowns to support their high ground than than Soul does. And I think it's because Creative and To You are probably mispositioned a little bit. So I would, again, like Ana here and maybe Zarya here as well so they can easily bubble and help these guys. Because they should, you really can't lose that high ground that easily. Fearless jumps into cover behind box. Yeah, exactly. So Fearless does a good job using that box cover. But I think that box cover is less valuable or less useful if you have people here instead of you can see people back here. I don't like that. All right. So I assume this, this, this should be a one fight for Dallas. I don't think even Rally will be enough here. That's no. Oh, Fearless over Extenso. Oh, Fearless. Oh, he gets hacked at 98%. Oh, no. Oh. So this is where, you know, you know, <laughs> of mice and men, chat. Brilliant setup. Well executed. And just a micro play from Fitz. Just one, this is where sometimes you can set things up really well and just an unlucky, like unlucky, you know, not necessarily unlucky. Of course, there's counterplay to this. Like maybe we could have bubbled here with Fearless or whatever, but like uh, it sucks. And, and now because of spawn advantage, Dallas does a really good job executing this, but this fight isn't won despite that. They killed Rallying Brig because of a phenomenal grav, but you know, who knows? That sucks. Thoughts on this quick clip? Important? Okay, done. <laughs> I wait, I know what this is. It's con? Okay, well I'll click on it. Okay. Alright, so I thought I thought it was me slamming into the wall. <laughs> Alright, so this is IBTB con with Paris Eternal. Uh wait, what? No, it's not. No, it's not. This is that's you. This is con. You liar. This is you on Zen versus Khan. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, greatest flux support in Europe, by the way. Deleted. Don, I don't know what you do, man, but I swear every hero you play is just, you're just magically 4.4. I don't know how you do it. Weren't you 4.5 on like Doomfist as well or something stupid? 
You're like the cabster. You're like the uh, you're like the the tank cabster where you just can play every role in like 4.4k level. Ah, uh, nice right click. Doomfist Hanzo, yeah, stupid man. How does a man be a good main tank and also be able to play every other hero at like a 4.3, 4.4k level? That's insane. Most people are like most people I think are like peak like 4.1 and you're like a solid 300 SR higher than normal. Hope you're doing well, mate. I miss working with you, brother. <clears throat> but yeah, phenomenal hack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, chat. Brilliant. Chat. Actually. Chat. What do you see it? When you see it, you'll crap bricks. <laughs> Whatever that old meme was. Look, 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 look at, look at, look at Hanbin. Look at Hanbin. Do you see the bubble there? Not a big thing, like bubble there's generally fine. Maybe it was done to prevent whip shot or whatever, but the bubble there stacked with a bubble here, probably not 100% necessary. And it does lead, mean that he gets hacked. Like if he had bubble here, he cleans the purple and he doesn't get hacked. So, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, but uh, you know, definitely could have been a better timed bubble and this wouldn't have happened. And this is a really, really bad fight because now Dallas has to walk through a choke into off angles and they're down their main tank. Yeah, yeah but like this is just silly of... I mean, I guess Jexy's like, hey, we have to clutch here, but Jexy should not be walking through a choke before clearing an angle. This is really silly of Jexy. Jexy just dies. Like, that's not how you play Brig. If anything, you would play more defensive, let your Zarya take the space or your Echo take the space aggressively, but you don't do that with Brig, guys. You don't stop front laying as Brig. Even if you have Rally, it's just super sketch. Really questionable EMP. Really questionable EMP. You have the map control because they can't press W into your angles because they're down to, and he just EMPs anyway. Very questionable. What, what happens here? Okay, it lags in stream. He actually dies for it too. That was... So yeah, Dallas can't walk through the choke. So Soul says, you know what, we'll do you guys a favor and we'll walk through the choke and feed instead. And they waste EMP along the, time, along the way. So I don't think Soul's gonna lose this, but that was really, really bad of Fitz. Fitz's Sombra has not impressed me so far. I mean, at least what we've seen in stream. That was really, really sloppy of, of Soul. Does that make sense, chat? Like what just happened? You get two kills. And instead of stabilizing and playing your spawns, or at least like pushing out angles here, they just AFK down main and just run it on main and use an ult and still die. Because they're, again, walking into angles. <laughs> like, it's the same concept over and over again. It's like, which of these which of these goofballs is going to like make the mistake? Now, the obvious problem here is that because Fitz fed and Gesture fed, now Gesture was trying to follow up with his team, but because Fitz fed, this means that Dallas never really had to reset map control. They were able to hold this position up here or take, they could hold these positions because that they like, like Soul lost too many players. They can't push up and take space again. They have to kind of just wait for respawns. And so they wait for respawns and Dallas just slowly trickles back, takes the high ground. And now we're right back where we started down an EMP. So atrocious. <laughs> So what I want to see from Dallas is right behind us to the left is that little pathway, that little high ground, that little ledge, right? We need people there from Dallas in there. They need Ana there, maybe, maybe Brig, maybe Azaria. Uh, you could set your Echo up and high ground up top right, maybe. Maybe your Sombra on top right as well or top left or something. But we need to see these spaces being controlled before we see them pushing in. Because they're going to push in with Nano, probably on Monkey, and then Primal afterwards. But they will be able to follow up with a great EMP, great grab, etc. And they'll keep their backline safe if they go around left. If they just run it down main, it's not going to work. So we can see it right here. Are they going to Are they going to clear out this here? No, they're not. This is what we're interested in. Are they going to now? Doha gets spy checked. This area of the map is very important now. Because the high ground is not super powerful anymore because where the card is, it's so far back, right? So the high ground's too far away in a way. I mean, it's a little prop care, care, because uh, the Echo can flake around, but this area of the map is so important. So they go in with Nano, but they have no map control. They have no flank here, so there's no actual kill pressure, right? So these guys could just legit just run away and probably be okay. <laughs> What happens here? 
Echo feeds, but then they trade. Fitz dies. It's really hard for me to see what's happening. So I don't like. I don't know what's happening. I really want to know what's happening over here because that's the other half of the macro. This is only half the story. Maybe they they screw this, but they're they're clearing out that high ground here. Like the echo's gonna flank around and get pocketed or something. I have no idea what's happening. It's so hard. Yeah, it looks like nano monkey hard engage. And Profit goes in really hard. I think what happens is they Nano Monkey engage. Profit goes in really hard. But because Profit doesn't spam out the Echo first before going in really hard, he gets pincered. So basically, what happens here is Dallas has this setup, right? And Soul has this setup, kind of ish, okay? Dallas sends in Nano Monkey with Primal really hard. He doesn't care about angles, he just goes in. And he's got primal, he's got nano, he's gonna get chunked, maybe, but he's okay, it's nano primal, right? Now, soul returns fire, they send their monkey in, but they also send in their echo. And while the echo is going in, because she doesn't respect, you know, what I assume is here, the echo here, she actually gets shot in the back and killed by the echo on the angle. What should have happened is we would have liked to have seen Nano Monkey goes in, baits all the attention, and while the monkey is baiting all the attention, this Echo takes the duel because the, she knows this Echo is getting no help now. Instead, this Echo cheats and tries to just run into him, but it gets shot in the back and killed because both Anas are distracted. So, um, Sparkle outplays Prophet. Prophet just goes in hard instead of actually clearing out the angle because you can't because you can't just wk in like maybe a monkey with primal and nano can but you you can't like you couldn't just walk through here and expect to not get shot because this guy is he's just he's not gonna die like he doesn't care but instead you see again repel dies which to me how does repel die repel gets stickied and then dies okay so repel dies Fitz's translocator gets smashed and he dies. Great sleep dart. And they manage to not lose too much space. Maybe Soul hangs in here. That's a huge error by Prophet. And then Dallas just out ults them essentially. Because Dallas had one, two, three, four, five ults here. And they had the. Uh, what do they have? Did they even have EMP? No, they wasted EMP. So they had the one, two, three ult. They had one, two ult. So they didn't even grab. Or they did grab it as too late. So yeah. They out ulted them. And honestly, Profit kind of feeds. We're almost done, chat. Okay. Angle control. We'll see how long he farms from here. How much pressure can he get? He's got his hacked mega again. They really need to clear him out. They cannot just like walk out. Okay. But he's not gone. More time wasted, more pressure, more, and he's never cleared. That's that's not good. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. Dallas, how many times are you going to disappoint me? Is this what it feels like to be a Dallas fan? There's a Sombra in your backline. She's still here. If you walk at her with more than one person, you can catch her and kill her or get rid of her. They ignore her. They go, oh, we'll go at her. Ha oh, ha, scary, scary. There we go. Okay, he's gone now. No, she's not. And then they just go to the rotate. They just go. And now look at the Sombra. 35% ult charge. Look at, look, look at Doha. Look at this. What, what is this? And it's not just about the, the, the pressure. And it's not just about the EMP ult charge. It's the hack threat because she's in a perfect position. Because again, we have all the angles here. There's people up here. The Winston's in the back line. There's an angle over here, right? We can kind of see the red smashes. But the Sombra's back here. Uncontested. Hack, this guy should die. Bingo. Dallas just does a terrible job with map control, man. They do a terrible job, especially on attack. They just try and just W key through, and it just doesn't work. And losing first fight there is atrocious because you're probably going to be, you know, that first ult is so important, right? And when you lose the first fight, you almost never build the first ult. Um, rare exceptions with like support ults and stuff. But so now, like, you're going to have EMP basically first ultimate before anything else is farmed. So there's Bubble. Fitz is going just hyper aggressive. He just needs that EMP. He needs that EMP. He gets cleared out. But now, now Dallas doesn't even have time to really clear angles. Like they just don't have time. Yeah, Dallas, the soul needs to get rid of Doha. 
Yeah, he just dies before he translocates out. EMP. It's two. It's fine. Or three. Bingo. Easy. I mean, that first fight can literally boil down to an awkward rotation by Dallas through a small room where Repel gets nuked. I don't know what nuked him. It looked like an echo angle that they didn't clear. And most importantly, they did not clear the Sombra. They just didn't clear Sombra. They just let her live there. You can't press W if you have people shooting in the back. Unless you have like amp speed and you can just speed to where the Sombra can't even keep up with you guys. But that's just really, really poor macro from uh, Dallas. Really, really poor. Okay. Briggs in defense again. They do Briggs in defense because they can set up the Zen in a safe location to where he can kind of see the whole fight, right? Longer sight line because he's set up ahead of time. Shorter sight line for the Ana who's on attack. Oh, they mirror Briggs in. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be basically like which flanker gets control, like gets, gets better support from the Zen. They're going to try and rotate. They get the rotation up. They clear out the angle, so... Uh, this is really hard for me to see what's happened. Okay, so it looks like... Yeah, so they're just putting pressure on ho controlling Hotel. <coughs> and they've got some run backline. Now, Briggs are still in high ground, though. But they're going to have to be careful because they can put point pressure and force in the drop. Pressuring Tracer out, get rid of her, get rid of her. Nice, force recalls, ball is hacked. This might be a draw because... Oh, oh. I need to put my ear, my ear things back on. Because you have to, it takes time to clear out angles and I don't know if they're gonna have time to do it before a minute goes. <clears throat> All right. Uh oh. Creative or er... yikes. I honestly don't even know what happens here, chat. It's so hard for me to see. I think they get Briggs in a drop. Sparkle dies. Yeah, they get Briggs in a drop, which means that their like sight lines are really limited, so they can't control discord and harmony everything um and then sparkle just gets picked like sparkle just there's just a mechanical error he's positioned out in the open there's the recall they get the ball kill but they demect the diva and this is really important right here so again do you see how profit doesn't go in main he reestablishes flank pressure he forces sombra out so Sombra's over here. There's Sombra right, right, right. Where can you see her? Right here, Sombra. Profit flanks, makes her go back towards her team before he puts pressure here. So he Profit doesn't immediately take the duel with Sparkle. He actually clears out the Sombra first, sends her back to her team, and then pressures Sparkle because now he doesn't have to worry about being hacked or shot by the Sombra. Right? He uh, he clears out his threats. So he clears out the Sombra, forces Translocator, goes for Sparkle who's standing out in the open on main, and he gets shot in the back. He wins the flank war, and then that's it. And then now he can just W key in and that's over. And you know, tracer diff basically there. Tracer diff and, and better better map control from there. Okay. Um chat, that's all.